Hello again. Welcome to podcast number two of the Earl Grey Reader. I have my tea in hand. I also have an orange cranberry scone with me today. We're going to read a story from the book The Fox's Window by Naoko Awa, translated by Toshia Kame. The story is entitled A Blue Flower. On a back street stood a little shop with a large sign that read, Umbrella Repairs. When a rain that had lasted many days finally stopped, people from all over town brought their broken umbrellas to the shop. Please fix them as soon as possible. It might rain again soon, all the customers said. Crouched among a pile of umbrellas, The repairman had busied himself in his workshop since the early morning. Although still young, he excelled at repairing umbrellas. By the evening, he had mended all of them and returned them to their owners. Now he had a lot of money, nearly three times more than usual. I'll get the roof fixed, then buy a white curtain, he thought, delighted. For a long time, He had wanted a new curtain for the window of his upstairs room where he lived alone. He also wanted an oil paint set, a new guitar, and there were so many things he wanted to buy. The next day, the umbrella repairman decided to go into town and buy a white curtain, oil paints, and a guitar. A fine rain was falling outside. As he made his way to town, Quite a distance from his shop, the umbrella repairman's heart beat with excitement. First, I'll ask a builder to repair the roof. Then I'll go to the department store, he said to himself, walking briskly. When the umbrella repairman came around the last bend before the town, he saw a little girl in a light blue dress leaning over the low hedge. He passed her and stopped. The girl stood without an umbrella, staring into the distance. The umbrella repairman shielded her from the rain with his large black umbrella. What are you doing? he asked. The girl raised her pale, round face and looked at the umbrella repairman with her large eyes. Don't you have an umbrella? The girl shook her head, her straight hair swaying above her shoulders. No umbrella? he asked again. The girl shook her head again. That's not good. He was passionate about umbrellas. Even a little girl like yourself needs her own umbrella. Then he remembered his wallet was fat with money. I'm going to make you an umbrella, he said cheerfully. The girl smiled and said, Thank you. I'm going to town right now. Let's go buy fabric for your umbrella. The tall young man and the tiny little girl started toward town under one umbrella. The rain was still falling. In the department store, they rode the escalators up to the fabric section, which was lined with rows of fabric making waves of all colors. The girl pointed to the blue fabric, which was three times more expensive than a white curtain but the umbrella repairman gladly bought it, thinking he could make a fine umbrella for the girl. Then they went up to the rooftop garden and drank ice cream sodas at a white table under a large sunshade. When the umbrella is finished, I'll bring it to you. Where do you live? he said. You can meet me over there, the girl said. Excuse me? At the bend. I'll see you tomorrow morning then, he said. They agreed to meet the next morning. After leaving the girl by the hedge at the bend, the umbrella repairman hurried home. I'm going to make an excellent umbrella, he thought. He completely forgot about the roof, nor did he buy himself a white curtain, an oil paint set, or a guitar. That night, the umbrella repairman stayed up late working on the girl's umbrella. 
It was well past midnight when he was finished. In his untidy workshop, he opened the small blue umbrella. What a beautiful shape! I love the way the fabric hangs, too, he thought. The blue fabric the girl had chosen gave a splendid glow that reminded him of the sea he saw long ago, and of the blue sky after the rain. When he was under it, he felt as if he were inside a small house with a blue roof. What a wonderful umbrella, he thought, impressed with his own skill. The next morning, the umbrella repairman met the girl in the light blue dress. Here you go. He opened the blue umbrella and shielded her from the rain, which pattered above her head. It's blue like the sea, the girl said. Yes, I thought so too. It feels like I'm inside a house with a blue roof. Exactly, I thought so too, the umbrella repairman said, delighted. But the blue roofed house was too small for two people. Knock, knock. What are you doing in your house, miss? He said, pretending to knock on a door. What a wonderful umbrella, he thought. After a while... The girl walked away under the blue umbrella, disappearing into the drizzle. But then, something strange started to happen. When the umbrella repairman got home, a long line of young girls was waiting in front of his shop. Ah, do you want your umbrellas mended? he asked with a businesslike smile. No, one of the girls answered. I want a new umbrella. A new umbrella? Yes, please make me a blue umbrella. Me too, another said. Me too, the others chimed in chorus. The umbrella repairman was left speechless. Please make me a blue umbrella as soon as possible, all the customers said. The umbrella repairman went into town again and bought lots of blue fabric and material to make more umbrellas. He stayed up all that night making blue umbrellas in his workshop. He had no time to sleep because his customers kept asking for more. Over the next week, the umbrella repairman made a fortune. Before long, young girls with blue umbrellas were all over town. One day, the newspaper ran a short article in a bottom corner. This year, blue umbrellas are in fashion. Curiously, they are handmade in a little shop on a back street. Then, more young girls who had read the article rushed to the shop. They spilled out of the front door, crowding the streets and forming a line that almost reached the center of town. Some customers still asked him to mend their umbrellas, but he was very busy. He didn't even remember who left which ones. The umbrella repairman called the local sign painter and asked him to repaint his sign. The new sign read, Blue Umbrellas no repairs. Every now and then, customers would come back for their umbrellas, but they weren't fixed yet. I've been very busy, was his usual excuse. He didn't even want to see old umbrellas, ones with bent handles, broken ribs, and holes. By now, the umbrella repairman had had a new roof put on, and the window of his upstairs room was curtained with expensive lace. In one corner of his room, he kept a new oil paint set and a chestnut-colored guitar. Orders for blue umbrellas kept coming in. One day, a little girl came to pick up her umbrella. Repair? I've been very busy. Can't you wait a few more days? The umbrella repairman said without looking up. Ten days passed. The department store ran a newspaper ad. Lemon-colored umbrellas on rainy days. After that, he received fewer and fewer orders. Customers poured into the department store, shoving their way toward the umbrella section. Within a few days, young girls with lemon-colored umbrellas were all over town. No one came to the umbrella repairman shop anymore. The new sign, the new roof and the new curtain no longer cheered him up. Exhausted, he was sitting with a vacant look on his face. 
It was another drizzling day. One day, a little girl came into the shop, dripping with rain. Hello, she said. May I help you? The umbrella repairman tilted his head. Is my umbrella ready? asked the girl. The umbrella repairman stared at the girl. Her light blue dress looked familiar. So did her large eyes and short hair. Oh, it's you! he finally remembered, wondering when she had left her umbrella. I asked you to mend it a long time ago. One of the ribs is broken, said the girl. The umbrella repairman hurriedly searched through his workshop and found the girl's broken umbrella lying in one corner. I came here many times, the girl stared at him sadly. Sorry, said the umbrella repairman. Can you fix it by tomorrow, she asked. Sure, I'll bring it to you tomorrow morning. I'll meet you back by the hedge, he promised. That night, the umbrella repairman carefully mended the girl's umbrella. His mind drifted back to the time when he had made it purely out of kindness. How many had he made since then? The streets had once overflowed with blue umbrellas but those had never reminded him of the sea or the sky. He trembled. The next morning, the umbrella repairman left the shop with the girl's umbrella under his arm. Before long, the girl's blue dress came into view at the bend, and he started to run through the rain. But when he came to the hedge, no one was there. What he mistook for the girl's dress was a hydrangea bloom dripping in the rain like a large blue ball. And that was A Blue Flower by Naoko Awa, translated by Toshia Kame. And thank you for permission granted by Toshia Kame to read this story. This has been the Earl Grey Reader. I hope everyone has a wonderful day.